Ooh, let's shoot some Ilford 35 millimeter HP5 in the Nicker Matte EL with a variety of lenses. And one of them is a pretty crazy unique lens. Let's get into it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. I have never shot black and white 35 millimeter film. I'm actually not a huge black and white film shooter in general, even with my instant photography. I don't know why, I just never really gotten into it. But I was heading down to California, to Policon, made stops along the way and shot some pretty cool things. But this is the first video I've really ever talked about this camera. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna head out and shoot it, but before we do that, I want to let you guys know what lenses I'm using. I'm using two lenses. I'm using this kind of junky Sigma, I don't even know what it is, 28 to 80 millimeter lens. It's a 3.5 to 5.6, there's nothing fancy. kind of like it because it gives a unique look of it just being kind of crappy and retro and it gives a nice vibe, which is kind of the aesthetic I go for when I shoot 35 millimeter, even 120, to be honest, that's just me. But I also have this, this is a video lens made by Laua and it is a wide angle macro lens as well as a tilt shift lens, yeah, kind of, it's kind of. <laughs> We're not gonna go into that, but it is an F4. You can literally touch the glass and focus on your finger. I didn't really use that in this video. I was mostly using this for its wide angle feature for this particular shoot, but I have some ideas for this in the future that I'm gonna shoot uh, on 35. Right, so stay tuned for that. So without further ado, let's shut up and head out and shoot some photos. <laughs> I got a wide shot with like a whole tree in there. Oh, really? <laughs> Just like your backwards hat. I mean, that, backwards that was kind hat. of a good look. Was it? I don't, I don't know if I'm really a backwards hat kind of guy. Oh, look, look at the GPS. So after I got back from the trip, I still had a couple of shots left in the camera. So I needed to head out and shoot those. But what I did was is I found a camera shop that was nearby that I was gonna have this film developed. So I just walked around that area, shot a couple of them, just so I can get this roll out and developed, as well as nearly losing the roll in the process. <laughs> Whoops. I was using the Laua wide angle lens for these last few shots and it is such a cool lens for street photography. It's so wide and beautiful without distortion. 
Now that I shot the last few shots, I headed over to Citizen's Photo to get this role developed. And honestly, there was a couple extra roles that I wanted to get done. And it wasn't too expensive. Uh, with scans for three roles, I think I paid like $31, $32. The shots that I shot with the Sigma lens, uh, it's pretty great. They, I think, lend a cool, unique look to them, uh, which is what I'm after. I actually like the aesthetic of something that almost looks crappy. But switching over to the Laowa lens definitely is a major difference. You can definitely see the difference in sharpness. You can see the difference in the overall contrast of the photos as well. This is great for shooting with black and white film because you want to get that contrast, that high contrast. Nikromat is a really cool camera and it's not even expensive. I think you can find these on like eBay all day long for like 50 bucks. Pretty fantastic. I've been very pleased with this $10 find. Now I did shoot some of this last year on a trip to California. I went down to Anaheim, just some random shots down there. And here are some of those shots. It's color film. I think I shot this with a uh, Fuji Superior. I think that's what it is. I can't 100% remember. And that was with the Sigma lens. And I think these this Beverly Hills shot, so cool. I don't know why I got some of the uh, light bleed on, on some of these shots. I don't understand why that happened. Maybe, maybe this has a light leak, uh, but I don't know. Either way, it's on every shot, but still, I actually really dig these shots. I think the favorite shots I did shoot with the HP5 though were of this, was it the Stardust Motel? Ah, that looks so cool. As well as the Thunderbird Lodge. That one is absolutely incredible. And I'm bummed that the Chandler tree didn't get exposed properly. I think the sun was hitting it directly and it was throwing off my uh, light meter on the inside. So I you can't even really tell it says Chandler tree. So I was kind of bummed with that one. I kind of dig the, uh, the shots from the Golden Gate Bridge though. Those are pretty cool. Oh, and probably the car wash shots. Yeah, those ones were up there too. Those came out pretty good. Woo, -hoo. welcome in to the segment where I read your comments from the previous video. In the previous video, just so happens to be on the ultimate guide to Instax cameras you might not have known about. Actually, I think I changed the title. <laughs> best cameras that you might have missed or something like that. Either way, let's read some comments. And for the chance to have your comment read in the next video, be sure to leave comments on this one. It may just happen, you never know. Do you have a recommendation for an instant camera to take self portraits with? Well, it just, that's a kind of a loaded question because I don't know what format you want to shoot, Instax or Polaroid. If you choose Instax, are you wanting to shoot mini, square, or wide? I can't really give you a direct recommendation on that regards. Polaroid might be a little bit easier because there's really only one format. I know there's a Polaroid Go, but you're probably not looking for that. Uh, maybe look into getting a Polaroid uh, One Step Two or One Step Plus. That might be your best bet. Would you be willing to do an episode covering which instant cameras do double exposures? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Oh yeah, there's not a lot of them even out there that offer it, so maybe actually that could be a video. Uh, to be honest though, I'm not really a double exposure guy. I've never really been into that. Wouldn't even know how to really describe or to do a tutorial on how to do it. <laughs> I would have to practice myself, but maybe I could do a, just a generic guide to cameras that have that, but there really isn't a lot of them. There's also one not really known called the Escura. I think that's how you say it which takes insects mini film. Yes, I have seen that. It looks so cool. It's super retro, has a lot of like fallout vibes. Yeah, really, I, I definitely want to get that camera and try it. It's on my list. It's been on there for a couple of years. I should probably break down and get it. Is it possible to change the lens of a Polaroid now from plastic to glass? Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> you're, you're stuck with that. Now we'll add this. Um, I have seen some interesting results from taking uh, glass lenses such as the ones from uh, Retrograde Engineer that he sells his 37 millimeter lenses. He has adapters for the Polaroid now that you can stick on there. I have noticed a slight sharpening uh, when you use these lenses. Um, it, more so with a Instax wide camera. I did that for part of the Halloween special last year on when I was reviewing his lenses and adapters. I noticed it drastically sharpened though. So, you see, check out that video. I'll link it down below. Um, but other than that, you, you can't change the lens out permanently. <laughs> hey, Chris, have you checked out the Nons SL645? I have not, and I would really like to. Uh, I don't have the money to buy one. I'm still recovering from the, the uh, Mint RF70. Uh, yeah, and then I bought the, what was it? The uh, Polaroid uh, 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 i2 camera. I think that was all in one year. That was like two grand. <laughs> 
Uh, I would love to test out the Nons camera though. I have reached out to them to see about collabing. Uh, they told me no. So maybe one day, but just not today. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, be sure to leave them in the comments below. You never know, your comment might be in the next video. Now, back to your regular scheduled programming. This was actually really, really fun to shoot with. Like I said, I'm not really into black and white photography that much, but this has actually gotten me interested uh, in shooting a little bit more. And stay tuned for another video coming soon where I shoot with a knicker mat exclusively with the Lawa with some Mr. Negative film. Yeah, I think it was their silver screen something. It's interesting. Yeah, that's being developed right now from Blue Moon Camera. So there'll be a review of, of that coming uh, in the near future. So consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.